happens. Now the next point, number two, is uniquely right hand. This is only for our HP. Right? This is only for right hand path or white light occultists, right? Strictly left hand path occultists won't agree with this. Um, second point. Um, this knowledge is only accessible, right? There's knowledge that has been lost. And I need to get access to this knowledge. And the only way that I'm going to gain access to this knowledge, and again, just quick aside, because I, I know that there are practitioners that watch me. Um, this is a generalized claim for both accounts. I can't go through, I'm not going to go through the 100 million part step of the occult. I can't, right? So I am generalizing in a sense. I know there are, there are sort of, you know, minor differences of practicing and Wiccans don't properly do this and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Celtic lore doesn't follow that, da, da, da. But I'm not going to get into all that. So I am, in a sense, generalizing to make it understandable. With that done, let's get back. So, uniquely right-hand path occultist. And this is true. Um, only a right-hand path occultist would say that because this knowledge was lost, the only way that I can access this knowledge is through devotion and rigorous self-detachment. Right? I need to detach myself from myself in order to gain enlightenment. Right? The way that I come to a higher consciousness, the way that I come to a deeper understanding of the truths of the world is through self-denial sounds harsh, but they're varying degrees of self-denial, but self-detachment. I, I realize that I need, to, um, I need to separate myself from my attachment to things. Right? Now, obviously, mainstream Buddhist traditions teach this to some extent. Um, so it's not to say that this is strictly unique to the heterodox theoretical accounts for RHP, because it's incorporated in some mainstream sects, but we'll see the distinctions specifically. So um, this knowledge is only accessible through um, devoted and rigorous self-detachment. Right? So we have to um, attain or aspire for it. Hey, Aspire for self <coughs> D E T A C H. Right? And I'm not, you know, again, this is a bit of a generalization. The point is, however, that no um, LHP would agree with this. Right? No um, left hand path occultist would agree with this. It'd be categorically false. So anybody who makes this claim that they are aspiring for self detachment, um, for uh, a, a withdrawal from connection, you can't be an LHP and make this claim. This claim is exclusive. If you say I'm an occultist and you say that um, I'm aspiring for enlightenment through removing attachments to the external world, then you, then you are practicing or you believe in or ascribe to um, um, white light occultism, right? You can't be um, uh, a left-hand path occultist and ascribe to this. There's no left-hand path occultist that's going to believe that. It's, it's profoundly contradictory to the tenets of LHP, which I'll discuss in a little bit. Now, there's varying degrees of this, and some people will say, no, I don't really do that, but, you know, that debate is for them to have on their own terms. And this, and this, this concept comes um, from the mystic um, yogi, um, Patanjali. Um, so Patanjali comes up with this notion, obviously. Patanjali is the author of the, the, um, the yoga, Yoga Sutra, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. So, next bullet point onto that. Patanjali, um, a great Hindu mystic, and as again, the author of the Yoga Sutra, writes, and here's a quote from Patanjali, quote, The highest form of detachment, this is a quote from Patanjali, um, The highest form of detachment is achieved in the mind ceasing to act. In me preparing this lecture, writing notes, reading through all the books, putting all of this, compiling this together, to prepare to you, to talk, to write, to think about what I'm going to do next, my mind is completely active, I'm thinking non-stop about stuff, and I'm, uh, as always, talking forever. <laughs> so, the, the um, right-hand path member would say, listen, the highest form of enlightenment, right, the highest form of detachment is achieved in the mind ceasing to act. The highest form of detachment isn't my detachment with the world, it's my detachment from myself. Like, I detach from myself. I am no... I, um, I've, I've watched videos on, on YouTube, I forget the name of the chemical, but there's this chemical that, that you can take, I forget, DHP or some crazy psychedelic, where you take the drug and like you, 
step outside of your own body. It's sort of like that. It's like, you know, a life after death experience. Like I'm looking at myself objectively on a table, right? I'm no, I'm not, I'm, my mind isn't connected to me. I'm, I'm gone, right? So the highest form of detachment is achieved in the mind ceasing to act. Patanjali was undeniably um, uh, a mystic, right? So the highest form of detachment is achieved in the mind ceasing to act. The seer is said to be in a state of, I can't pronounce these words, so forgive me, um, kaivalya, or liberation, right? So, kaivalya, yeah, kaivalya, I guess, um, correct me if I pronounce it wrong, I don't know how you would, um, but um, kaivalya is the sense of liberation, right? I'm liberating myself from attachments to stuff. And you can think of this idea of attachment as a weight. So if I'm here, and I'm trying to get to Kalvalia, we'll write it down, K-A-I-V-A-L-Y-A. -A. If this is my goal, if I'm trying to get to Kalvalia, then it's difficult to get there if I have um, chains that are shackling me down, right? I got my job, and I got the kids, and I got the bills, and I got, I got food, and I, and I got sex, and, you know, there's all these weights that are holding me down, right? And it's hard for me to drag myself to this liberation if I'm attached to all this stuff. So the idea is, if you want to get here, start breaking off those attachments one by one, right? So I don't worry about that, I don't worry about that, I get rid of this big one, I get rid of that. Now it's just me, and I get closer, now I can get really close, but I can't get here until it's just like, like ethereal me, right? It's just like, I've, you know, and then, and then there's like sort of me here, right? It's like, I've uh, divorced myself from myself, right? That's, that's when I attain that state. So it's a, a sense of breaking my attachment. And again, um, it's, it's not necessarily um, a completely um, esoteric conception. We'll see how it does get more esoteric. Because a lot of this is practiced in um, various forms of Eastern, um, Eastern religious beliefs. So that's what um, Patanjali says. The next point under that is, and this is me, and, and I've written, not a plug, but again, I took the first chapter of uh, my dissertation and made it into a book. Um, it's called Conceptions of Evil Throughout History of Ideas, a Survey of Thought, and basically it's a historical analysis of evil from, as I said, from antiquity until um, the modern time. Um, and a lot of that discourse has to do with occultist interpretations of evil, right? Um, not all of it, but a lot of it. You can't, you can't, you know, do this type of research for as long as I've been doing it without coming across Nazis and the occult, blah, 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 you know, stuff like that. So, uh, um, this is my quote from, from uh, that book, and I probably should have put the page, but I forgot to put the page. Um, in self-liberation, in self-liberation, the ultimate act of Kalvalya, liberation of the mind, one transcends death and all attachments including one's attachment to oneself, right? So that's, that's, that's the idea, right? Um, in self-liberation, this is a quote from my book, um, in self-liberation and the ultimate act of Kaivalya, liberation of the mind, one transcends death and all attachments, including one's attachment to myself. I liberate myself from myself, right? Um, and as we said before, it sounds paradoxical, but remember the image that I drew of the first principle sort of um, emanating, infusing itself in everything. Well, I mean, the this, this sense of death is is not really as catastrophic as it would be because I am already part of that one. Right? So it's sort of like a return to that initial state. Um, so that's that's an important uh, concept to know. And then uh, another mystic. I didn't want to just stay uh, uh, in the yogi tradition. Another mystic, an Arabic uh, Islamic mystic. Uh, I'm going to say the whole name, you have to forgive me. Abu R. Rehan Muhammad Ibn Ahmad al Burundi, al Buruni, al Buruni, known as al Buruni, and the quotation is there. Um, al Buruni grabs um, Patanjali and he translates um, Patanjali from, I think it's Sanskrit, to, to Arabic. And this is the translation. So this is al Buruni translating. Um, uh, Patanjali. And there's debate about this particular passage, that's why I chose it. Um, so for those of you who want to go and do a little bit more research in this passage, knock yourself out. Um, quote, here's the question, question and answer. Question, 
how can the calling of the 